I think my funniest moment in it, which I haven't seen yet, but it's the part where Mayor is trying to convince me to save the world and I'm not having it. We're coming out of the bar and my dad's in the passenger seat and I just go, Pfft. That's my funniest scene because James Wan wanted me to get really emotional there. Just get out all this, just like divulge all this information to Mara, who's a complete stranger, and he's a man who would not do that. I tried my hardest, and then I just basically looked at the camera and was like, Pfft. and that was for James, because I couldn't get there. And it, the whole crew laughed, and I had it was funny because my mom used to do that to me all the time when I was being a punk. She'd go, Pfft. We spent eight months filming this, and that's not even counting all the training and stuff. So there are so many, there are so many moments where you know you find yourself uh, in these incredibly strange positions. For instance, I'm standing on a, on a graded box, you know, first thing in the morning after three hours of hair and makeup. Uh, you know, it's six o'clock in the morning, and I'm in this empty airline hangar that's been turned into a studio, basically, and it's freezing cold, and I'm being hosed down for my job as an adult woman, person. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. There are so many moments where you just have to laugh at the absurdity uh, when you have to, you know, like ask yourself, am I speaking to this fish? And also what, what is my steed? Am I on a whale, a shark? Cause you know, you're not obviously really working with any of those things. You're just in this blue screen land, you know? I'm so lucky I meet and work in a job where I get so many of those moments that I'm like taken aback and and I have to laugh at the absurdity of my life. <laughs> I think next time I'm just gonna, I'm gonna expect to, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna expect two paychecks. One's just for putting up with the, <laughs> the suit and that, uh, everything that came with it and being so cold all the time. And the other was acting. <laughs> Anytime I put my actors in those uh, those sort of um, the, the rigs that they have to sit in that kind of create the impression of them floating underwater, those are my, uh, I think, strongest memories from this film because <laughs> they're, they're not the most comfortable sort of rigs for the actors and so sometimes, you know, it can be a bit painful. I have memories of just, just images of Jason going, oh, get me out of this rig! <laughs> so that was, that was kind of funny. A lot of water was involved in, in this film. Uh, just constantly just dumping buckets of water on my actors. Uh, I'm like, you guys kind of know what you're signing up for, right? When you're signing up for a movie called Aquaman, you know you gotta get wet. <laughs> Most memorable moment, I tell you what it is, because so much of my film, I'm, I'm in a uh, blue screen, so I'm, I'm feel like I'm doing some strange avant-garde theater hanging in wires. And then we had a one day where I was sitting out on the beach where we had to do this scene where I come up on the beach and sitting, putting my director's chair facing the ocean in my costume and just falling asleep. That was my most memorable because I finally felt like I could just feel the warmth of the ocean and it's just, uh, it's great, very relaxing. So I realized one day where like Jason is learning to play the bass and he would sort of <laughs> stroll into set like playing, trying to, <laughs> learning to play his bass as he's in his Aquaman outfit, trying to get ready for a scene. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> it was very funny. I play drums, I play guitar, so we had a little band set up, so we, I would always encourage him to want to play together. And he, and he got pretty good, he was learning the bass, so it was good. We had another couple stunt guys who played, uh, and, our, and our trainer was learning guitar, but I, I play in a band with my brother, so I was really always looking for someone to play with me, which, Sadly, I was usually just my own drum solo waiting for people to pick up an instrument, but people got very scared, I think. Over, I think, a Bordeaux. She's a fan of wine, I'm a fan of Guinness, and we sat down and had some drinks and hashed it out. It's pretty easy working with Amber. We get along so well, Jason and I. Um, we worked together on Justice League, obviously, and we got to know each other a bit there, but I couldn't, I couldn't be luckier. I couldn't have a cooler co-star, and if you spend that long with someone, you, that's really important, and he just has this infectious energy, and you see it in Arthur, you see it in Aquaman, and you see it in him. He's just that person, and I, I couldn't be luckier. I wouldn't call it romantic. I'd call it like you're in a harness being you know, hanging from a ceiling. Cameras went around you and you're in a blue screen, but someone to hold on to your feet who's in a blue suit pushing you towards another person who's, and spinning you around as you kiss. It's very awkward. First off, she like swam up on Shamu, jumped off of that before she told me that, so. It's quite technical, huh? And also we're doing it not in, spoiler alert, we're actually not filming it in Atlantis. It's kind of funny because that you have to create these universes in your head and kind of imbue the scenario with that uh, or some sense of that without actually having the luxury of seeing it or being in it. So it's quite, it, 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 it takes a lot of choreography and practice, especially considering it involves being rigged up to, to, to wires and things that you don't necessarily have 
you know, control over. It's it's quite it's quite strange. They were kind of harnessed in again those really uncomfortable harnesses in, in a blue screen room with uh, you know with like basically a camera just like kind of, kind of zipping around them. Uh, but you know, obviously the magic comes you know at the end when post production we put in the visual effects to kind of create the world that they're in. It's uh, it, it, it's a it's an image and a look that I uh, wanted to create from the comic book, which is uh, they they all these classic images of them kind of kissing on the water with their hair sort of billowing in slow motion. I would imagine, and uh, and that was a, uh, a an aesthetic that I really wanted to capture for the film. You know what? Because I, I have pints with them all the time, but I'd rather I'd probably have a pint with with Wonder Woman. She's my friend. If I could choose any superhero to go get a drink with, oh boy. Um, well, there wouldn't be a villain because I feel like they would be like sneaky. They would like be, you know. Um, I, 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 I'd probably choose. Um, I think I think Clark Kent would have a nice, nice wholesome beer together and <laughs> discuss, you know, the future and the city. I guess maybe Superman, and you know, just because he's such an interesting character. I, I think you know, uh, it'd be interesting to pick Superman's brain and see what it is about, what, how he sees, you know, mankind and stuff like that. So I don't know, that could be an interesting one. Lift those weights and have a good diet. The proper amount of protein and carbs and fats. And, uh, there's like someone who hands me some shit, do it. I think food just be kind of comes fuel at that point. It's not like I wouldn't, I would want to eat pasta and all the things that aren't good for you. And that's what I enjoy. But that's not what you can have when you're doing Aquaman. Who would I choose? That's very interesting. Who would who would I Patrick choose or Orm? Because I think they're two different things. I think Orm would probably like somebody a little more uh, villainous. Um, I'd probably choose uh, choose choose Wonder Woman. Yeah, um, or uh, yeah, because I think he would. I think Orm would kind of feel like you know she's also a, an outsider and she's got a whole group of people that was, has been off the map and no one's known about. I think we could find some similarities there with Atlanteans, so, you know, yeah, maybe we could do some damage together. I have no idea what he would be doing, but I would love to be in it because it's my favorite show on Earth, but I think there's no room for him, so I'd probably, sorry. You wouldn't take on potential Jon Snow's? I mean, I, if, I could do that, but I don't think it's appropriate, but I could. You can have two husbands, surely, or you could be... I would probably make them both my wife. I'm, I'm pretty sure Drogo's gonna... Drogo can't come back.